things that we're asking you to do in, um, in Honors Pre-Cal is to do what we're calling this graphing summary. And so I wanted to talk through a few details about this, this document um, and what I'm asking you to do. So you'll notice, basically I made a chart and I copied and pasted it and then changed the parent functions. So on this first one, it'll say like y equals x squared. Well, what's its name? You could call that um, a quadratic function. You could call it a parabola. Um, typically, these have some additional sort of name happening here. Um, and then I ask domain and range. I want a little sketch of it. I want it, You need to know what it looks like. You'll tell me any zeros that the parent function may have. Does it have asymptotes? Um, obviously, this one does not. So you'll, as you go along, you're going to write na or none with some frequency. Okay. Um, a y-intercept, tell me where it is. This one, it's not a periodic function, so it's not going to have a period. So remember when we talked about um, periodic functions, it has a repeating period. There's something that happens over and over and over again. Um, that isn't the case with the quadratic function. Um, does it have amplitude? No. Trick, um, sine and cosine have amplitude. Max and min, yes. Okay, where would that be? And then we want to talk about is it increasing, is it decreasing, what's its end behavior? All of these ideas are hugely important when you get to calculus. Okay, so that's the whole point of this. We want you to, to really know and to retain, and then even to have a, a reference um, if you encounter any of these parent functions again in, um, in calculus. So we start with some of the ones that you may have learned first in Algebra 1 and then in Algebra 2, and then we cruise along and we get to... Um, some that are a little more, so these two right here, I have, um, well, this exponential function, it's e to the x, it could have been 2 to the x, um, they all look very similar, and then down here, this could be log of x, but I used natural log of x, they behave in the same sort of way, they're not exactly the same, but if you don't, um, if you want to try and see what I'm talking about, come over to Desmos, and, um, and type in uh, y, y equals log of x versus y equals the natural log of x. So you'll notice they still have this same point here of um, 1, 0 because um, the log or the natural log of 1 is equal to 0. And they, they behave in a similar way, but they're not exactly the same. Okay, I don't need that for right now. Um, I wanted to talk a little more. Oh, and then after that, we get into the trig functions. So there are the, the six trig parent functions, and then, um, and then we do the inverse trig functions, continuing on. Um, one thing, when, then you, we go into some of the conic stuff, and so it, um, in the past we've always made a bigger um, emphasis on its description based on distance and why is it called a conic section. I don't remember if I spent enough time on it while we were doing our distance learning, but if you go to this cool math algebra help, um, each one of these has, oh, it blocked it, well, okay. If you slice the cone horizontally, all right, I'm sorry. Um, come to this, turn on your Adobe Flash or whatever so you can kind of see um, how you, they, what they're showing you is how you, slice it, um, how you slice the cone to get a circle, and then they show you um, the, the fact that it's, they're equally distant around the point, and, and they're all kind of cool, but sorry. Um, okay. So that's what I mean by those things. So this is, yeah, the, the different conic sections. The last bit of this chart deals with the polar graphs, and this is almost identical, uh, or it had been in the past, identical to the, the chart that I made you turn in already. If you'd like to do it again, to have it all in one place, by all means, don't let me stop you. Um, but if you're not interested in filling it out again, I completely understand. And you don't have to do the polar section a, a second time if you already turned that in. A um, couple thoughts I want to show you here on Desmos. Um, when we talk about, here's the, the rational function, the 1 over x. We talk about its concavity. This right here is concave up. This down here is concave down. Do you remember how we're up like a cup and down like a frown? Um, on this one, we can see um, on, the, the, on the, the summary over here. Oh, I didn't know I didn't go far enough. 
On this one, I just use variables. Um, so this ax plus by, or and I don't know why I said ax plus by. Um, y equals ax plus b over cx plus d. Well, I typed in actual numbers here to kind of get an idea of what's happening. So you can use that to figure out, well, what's, there's an asymptote in here somewhere. Oh, sure enough, that's negative 5 thirds. Um, and then I have a 0 when I set the numerator equal to 0. So you can write that, um, this point should right here be, yeah, sure enough, 1 half. Um, another thing that the, the chart asks you to do is they say, is the parent function even or odd? Well, if you remember, an even function has symmetry with respect to the y-axis. So anything over here gets folded over here. Um, so this one, this, this parabola is an even function. Um, and then, but then the chart says, how do transformations impact the function if, it, if it's even or odd? Um, so on this one, notice I can, if I change A, I can stretch this and that doesn't change. I can even make it negative and that doesn't change the fact that this is still even. I'll come back to one, just leave it there. Um, on B, however, if I change the value of B, now I've shifted it left and right. Um, this is no longer um, an even function. Notice that it no longer has symmetry with respect to um, the y-axis. So that one, there are transformations that keep it even, and there are also transformations where it's no longer even. That doesn't make it odd. Remember how a whole lot of our functions would be neither even nor odd. Um, and then C, if all I do is change C and move this up or down, it's still even. So, um, so notice what I did is I, I put in these little sliders, like I typed in something here. I said y is equal to ax. Um, well, oh, it still knows a. Let's use a new variable. Sorry about that. If I said dx, then I can add a slider right here. And so it allows me to change this value, um, which is kind of a fun little feature on Desmos. Okay, I digress. Um, what, was there anything else I needed to, to tell you about? No, um, but a lot of these, is the parent function even or odd? Um, oh, odd, remember, let's turn this one off and turn this one on. Odd means that there's symmetry with respect to the origin. So something in quadrant one would now be in quadrant three. So notice this one right here, this one over x is an odd function. But we find a bunch of them, um, well, y equals the square root of x. If I type that in, y equals, oh, maybe the easiest way to do that is here, square root of x. Notice that's neither even nor odd, okay? So we have a lot of parent functions that aren't even or odd. But it is helpful to know what's happening. Okay, so hopefully this um, gives you a sense of what you need to do on this chart. My, my plan is um, I have an answer key, but I'm not ready to share it with you. Um, I want to see that you're thinking through this and doing the work and all that kind of stuff. So I will try and turn it on the week after it's due so you can go back and check and make sure you did things correctly. But uh, good luck.